A lot of us cyclists are typically obsessed with just one stat, speed. How fast did I go on my ride? We don't care about other stats like heart rate or cadence, but if we paid attention to these stats, we'd be able to ride faster and go farther. Interested? Now, people usually believe you can get these stats only if you use an expensive cycle computer, like this one. But what you really need is just a couple of relatively cheap sensors, like these guys, which you can pair with your phone. We can then look at this data live during our ride, use it to train, and then analyze it in depth post-ride. Now, if you're already familiar with cadence and heart rate and why they're important, feel free to skip this section and jump directly to the setup. Cadence or pedaling speed is the number of pedal strokes you make per minute, and it's measured in revolutions per minute, RPM. Ideally, you'd need to work towards increasing your cadence because pedaling faster with a lower gear puts less strain on your muscles, is better for your knees, and you'll be able to ride for longer without getting fatigued. You need cadence data so you can monitor your cadence and use cadence drills to train yourself to pedal at a cadence that is optimum for you. I don't need to explain what heart rate is, but just like cadence, you can monitor your heart rate to know what heart rate zone you're riding in. Different zones have different benefits. You can also train to heart rate while making sure you're not killing yourself with a rate that's too high. Heart rate data also increases the accuracy of your calories burned estimate. Now I've seen a lot of new cyclists inquiring about these stats, especially cadence. And there are often replies like, I don't ride with any gadgets. Are you a pro? Who cares about cadence? Just ride your bike, listen to your body and enjoy being outside. Well, sure, just riding a bike is a lot better than sitting on the couch. But if you love cycling, wouldn't you love being able to cycle faster or cycle for longer distances without getting tired, unlocking new destinations? Of course, if you cycle frequently, you're bound to get better at it. But if you devote some time to training, you'll improve a whole lot faster and develop skills that will make you far more efficient on the bike. Don't say, I'll start training only after I've cycled a thousand kilometers or delay it with arbitrary milestones. You can start training right now. And for effective training, we need good data, which is why we're looking at these sensors. We're going to start with the Wahoo app. Make sure you register, log in, and put in your personal stats. You can connect this account with other fitness sites like Strava, so that rides you record here appear there too. We are not using Strava to record because it only pairs with heart rate monitors. Use auto calculate for your max heart rate, unless you know what it is. You can also add additional pages to the live display, like this detailed page, which is uh, very detailed. Let's move on to the sensors. For cadence data, you need a cadence sensor like this one. There are many companies that make these and you can get them for as little as 2000 bucks. Now you would normally attach them to the inside of your left crank, turn the pedal to activate the sensor, and you can then pair it with your phone. Now, I've attached my cadence sensor to my shoe instead. The benefit being, you need only one cadence sensor, even if you have multiple bikes. And if your parents never bought you disco light shoes as a kid, you can now finally achieve your childhood dreams. Now, if you're interested in heart rate data, you can get yourself a chest strap heart rate monitor like this one. The cheapest one started around 3000 rupees. You need to moisten these contact points, strap it around your chest, that will activate the sensor and then you can pair it with your phone. Now if it's still not detecting a beat, you're probably watching the wrong video. Now this is a speed sensor. You attach it to your hub, rotate the wheel, activate the sensor paired with your phone. Now you typically don't need a speed sensor because your phone gives you reasonably accurate speed information using GPS. But because of how GPS speed tracking works, it can be a bit laggy, taking a bit of time to react to changes in your speed. If you don't like this lag, get yourself a speed sensor. Now, if you eventually buy a cycle computer, you can pair these same sensors with your computer and you can save some money by not having to buy them then. I must also mention simple cycle computers like this one. Most of these do only speed and distance tracking, but some do cadence and even heart rate. Now, these are typically sold with simpler sensors, they don't do GPS tracking, and they don't sync with Strava. But if all you're interested in is live data without any post-ride analysis, these are certainly an option. 
I used this particular computer for two years when I started cycling. But I always had my phone on as well, recording the ride for the GPS info. Make sure your sensors are detected before you start your ride by giving the pedal a quick turn and making sure your heart is beating. Click enter workout and you're off. The primary display shows you live speed, heart rate and cadence information. If you swipe, you can see your ride on the map. Now this isn't a training video, but I'll go over a few basic drills. For cadence training, you could do a high cadence drill where you ride at over 100 RPM for 10 minutes. Please remember to switch to a low gear for this. At the opposite end of the spectrum, you could also do a low cadence drill to improve strength where you ride at 50 to 60 RPM on a harder gear. For endurance rides, you'd want to build this average up slowly with the right drills to something between 80 and 90 RPM. Training to heart rate is more advanced because you need to figure out your heart rate zones based on your lactate threshold heart rate. So please look in the description for training videos. This screen on the app is great for showing you your current heart rate and how much time you spend in each zone. You can adjust your efforts to ride in different zones at different points on your ride. As you ramp up or ramp down your efforts, remember that your heart rate will take some time to catch up. Use the lap function every time you switch to a specific cadence or heart rate. This segregates the data from the rest of the ride, making it easy to analyze live and post ride. After you end your ride, you can analyze the data in app. These graphs show you your speed, elevation and heart rate by distance. But most interesting are the heart rate zones and cadence sections, of course. Because I use the lap function to train, it's easy to expand each lap and look at your average speed, heart rate or cadence to see how well you've met your training goals. Of course, you can also look at this data in Strava or any other service you've connected your Wahoo account to. Now, if you're looking for other things you can do on your bike besides training, go watch this video on how you can keep your bike rides fresh. And until next time, ride safe.